What would life be like if you didn't know or fear rejection? My name is Preston. Welcome to Done Believing. We are moving away from simply trusting the truth to knowing the truth. At the same time, we are fighting delusion because the world is delusional. Speaking of a delusional world, Christians are supposed to be the light of the world. We're supposed to be leaders to the people who are in the dark. They don't know what they're doing because they're in the dark. The dark being delusion, of course. Rather than being leaders to the world, however, most Christians believe Christian philosophy. They are simply believers of the philosophy of Jesus Christ. Now, a side note is when someone only believes in the philosophy of Jesus, what will happen is Jesus being the truth that he is, when they begin to discover that the truth is in other things as well, you know, little smidgens, little aspects of the truth, not the whole truth, just enough truth to cover up the turd below. You know, how many chocolate sprinkles do you have to put onto a turd until you don't see the turd anymore? But anyways, when there's just enough truth sprinkled across the top of something that is a complete lie, what happens to the Christian philosopher then? They realize that they can find philosophy in other world religions and practices. So, that being said, most Christians are afraid to lead. They don't want to be the light of the world. They want to stay exactly where they are. They don't want to lead the world out of delusion because they fear the responsibility. That's one reason they don't want to take that responsibility on. I don't know who has lied to these people and made them think that saving Christians or rather saving the lost of the world is their responsibility, but it's not. They're afraid that maybe people are going to see them for who they really are and going to judge them. Well, the reality is, is that if you're afraid of judging or being judged, it's because you're a judgmental person yourself. Simply eliminate the judgmental behaviors and tendencies and you will no longer be afraid of being judged. But I digress from that. That's not the point. They fear the responsibility or they don't know where they are going. That's probably more accurate. They just simply don't know what they're doing or where they're going or why. A lot of people, if you ask them, uh, what are you doing today? They'll say, I'm going to work. And if you say, why? They'll respond with something along the lines of, well, because I have to earn money. And if you continue to ask them why, it won't be too long until you realize they really don't know the purpose as to why they're doing whatever it is they're doing. They haven't built a life for themselves. They've just simply uh, built a career and they're just going through motions and they really don't know the purpose behind what it is they're doing and why they're doing it. How can these kind of people lead anyone? Simple answer, they can't. So I come back to the question, what would life be like if you didn't know or fear rejection? That, I suggest, is what is holding back most every Christian from being that so-called light of the world. The leaders of a lost and blind generation. So, what would happen if you didn't have this rejection anymore? You weren't afraid that you were going to be rejected. You weren't re afraid that you were going to be judged because of your responsibilities and handling your responsibilities irresponsibly. What would it be like? Let me tell you. You would know your full potential. You would know exactly what it is you needed to do. And then you would do it. You would not just know it in your mind, you would know it in your actions. Your life would be that of a high performance person achieving great 
things. Unfortunately, most people simply just don't trust that they are capable of achieving those things. Why is that? Because they're afraid. They're afraid of failure. They're afraid of rejection. They're afraid of what they might look like. They spend too much time in their minds and not enough time in the real world. You got to get out of your head. It's the most dangerous place you can be. It's the second most dangerous place on the face of the earth. The first most dangerous or the most dangerous being the womb of a pro choice feminist. Stay out of there. What else would happen? Well, you wouldn't procrastinate. That's right. You wouldn't be afraid of things. You would just take chances. You would take risk and you would see opportunities open up in front of you. And above all, you would not project your own rejection onto other people and especially not onto God. You cannot compartmentalize. There's no way that you are fully trusting God whom you have never seen all while doubting those around you who you see every day. You can't keep yourself from projecting ill feelings onto your heavenly father if you're already doing it with other people. If you're afraid that human beings are going to reject you, how much more with this all-powerful, all-knowing God that knows every one of your deepest and darkest secrets, how much more would he reject you? You got to get out of that thinking. You got to get out of that mindset. It doesn't work. The reason that I don't have to believe what I'm saying is because I know for a fact it doesn't get you anywhere. A life filled with the fear of rejection is useless. If you want to start leading your life instead of being drugged along by your life, you've got to understand two things. Number one, you are an overcomer. You've got to overcome. That is the life of a Christian is someone who understands we got to overcome these things. And two, you will move away from the fear of rejection. Begin to trust God. Stop projecting these things on to God. You got to take a stand. You got to move away from that. 